The first time I ever thought of being an artist was when I was about 42. I'm 53 now.、Um, I actually started as a scientist and as an architect. So I really enjoy being both scientists and architects. It's just that I really, really want to be in a place that has no right or wrong answer. So I think being an artist allowed me to celebrate the idea of originality and to be different from everyone else. So therefore, I didn't really know I want to be an artist until quite late in my life. How do I explain them? It's really hard. I think it's best that each one of you come and experience these projects in your own term, and、uh, you walk away with your own stories. I always think that these projects or these ideas come look for me. I actually don't go look for them. It's almost like we all experience those things. For example, when you go to bed tonight. And next morning you woke up with dreams that you had the night before. We didn't go look for those dreams. The dreams came look for us. So these projects are like that. They came look for me because I am emotionally and psychologically ready to receive them, and I become a conduit that transform these ideas into a physical project for. Visitors to experience it, and I'm very, very certain that these projects or these stories would disappear from us when it's fully matured and fully formed. I don't know when, but one day it would disappear. One of the way I do that to prepare myself for that is that I swim every day.、Uh, like this morning, I swim for an hour. And that really allows me to be very clear in terms of my mental frame and physically, I'm very, very、um, energized, so ready to provide these stories to the community in Jakarta. I was born in Taiwan in the 1960s. Spent my first. Twelve years in Taiwan, and then I went to live in Dominican Republic for two years before I went and lived in San Francisco, and then went to East Coast for graduate school and lived there for 17 years before we moved to Paris. So it's a very、um, enriching experience for me to be able to live in such a varied culture and civilizations and countries. So because of where I am. And where I was, I learned to speak Mandarin and Hokkien, English and French, and then Spanish and Italian. So this allows me to have a, a very different view of the civilization, where the countries I'm living in, just because I was able, where I'm able to speak their language. Having said that, it also makes my work, I think,、um, lacking a better word, is. To be a little bit more confused in a very good way, meaning when people experience my work, it's hard for them to pinpoint down, saying, "Oh, this is Taiwanese, or this is American, this is French," and I like that very much because that sense of uncertainty of my identity, the artist's identity, which allows the viewers to cast their own world experience or their life experience into my work. So, which means that the work I provide you or share with you does not have most of the answers. You have to provide the answers. How can I help the visitors engage with my work?、Uh, because this type of work is very avant-garde, and not many artists are doing this type of work, which is conceptually. Participatory performance work. So I always tell the、um, visitors to experience my work 
without any preconception of what art could be or art, what art is. So coming as a fresh sheet of paper and experience it with your heart and your ears and your eyes. And while when you're doing that, then something new will open up. And maybe you will just say, this is quite interesting, but I don't know if it's art. Even with that, I'm very happy that question is already forming in your mind because even I myself do not know what art is. It's something that is, we kind of know what art isn't, but at least I don't know what art is. Um, so hopefully this show will create some kind of discussion of what is art, what is beauty, how do we relate to each strangers uh, with a sense of um, generosity and kindness. Yes, I often engage with local communities in order to, uh, to complete my work. For example, like the Mending Project. So every day there is a, a member of the community sitting at the mending table waiting for people to bring a piece of garment that needs to be repaired. So I always trust the person who becomes um, a part of my work, meaning the, the singers or the dancers or the menders, when they are in that seat or when they are singing the Schubert leader in a costume that I and my friend Kalima have designed, they are the artist. In a way, Li Mingwei doesn't exist at that point just because I'm not the one who's giving the gift. I'm, I'm just the one who creates idea and these are the people who presented the work and also share and activate the work for me and, and for themselves really because they, in their own right they are artists because they're creating something beautiful between these two people. We want friendship, we want food, we want uh, somewhere dry and warm to go back to when it's later on tonight. So with that in my mind, when I create these works, uh, I think the response from all different cities or culture are very similar, especially for example, Sonic Blossom, which is uh, an opera singer wearing a costume, walking in the gallery slowly, making her encounter by asking a stranger or a visitor, would you like to receive a gift of song? And then if the person says yes, so uh, she was sing a Schubert lead in German just for this person. So you think, well, when this work was presented in Seoul, in Beijing, in Taipei, or in Tokyo, people didn't understand German. Now, does that make sense? it makes huge sense because it's not really lyric that move people. It's the gesture of the stranger giving a beautiful gift to a stranger, plus the sonic scape of um, Sonic Blossom is so beautiful and intense that move people into tears without understanding the lyric. So I think we're all the same, uh, very similar. I have my French <laughs> homework next to my bed, so I'm studying French now. And I'm also reading a book by Lewis Hyde called The Gift. And that's a hugely inspiring book for me. And the book is about the idea of gift giving between people. Okay? And sometimes I bring a book by a very well-known um, Japanese court lady that lived in the 10th century. It's called a pillow book. So it's about her court life in the imperial court of, to of Kyoto in Japan in the 10th century. It's her diary. So uh, I have a, a huge interest in classical literature and also um, Japanese history. So that's why I always take her with me when I travel. I want the audience to leave with a lot of questions and not with answers. 
to any of the work here, or even about their life or about their relationship. Go home and rethink about the thing you thought you knew already. And hopefully, if my if my work could be that question or that key to open up the Pandora's box, I'll be so honored and happy.